that we have our scaffold created, I want to jump into the console and play around with how that works. So uh, if you type Rails C in, that's short for Rails console, uh, it'll open up the console and we can actually play with the application a little bit. So uh, right here we can call any of our different models. Uh, if you call something that doesn't exist, you'll just get an error. So uh, we have our post model, and if I do post at all, it's going to say nothing exists. It doesn't give an error because nothing is there. Uh, whereas if I did post, or if I do food at all, then you have something called a name error. So it gives uninitialized constant foo. And so that's all good. That's the way you'd want it to be. So now if I do post dot create with a bang, then I can actually create posts in here. So I'm gonna do post create. I wanna give it a title of my cool post. And then I want to, uh, I can give it an image uh, and it doesn't really matter. I'm just do foo JPEG and then a description. And the description can be anything I want. So after I've done all of that, if I hit return, you can see that that executes a full line of SQL. So uh, it starts with begin and then it inserts into posts a title, image, and description. It also does create it at and update it at. And the reason why it's doing these values, this is just a way of escaping uh, a malicious SQL type of injection. So it does it here and then it takes in these parameters. It takes in the title and gives it my cool post and you can see it does this all as a set of arrays. This is a nested array inside of this larger array. And then you have image, foo, JPEG, and then description. And so uh, this all works. Now if I do post.all, now you can see it has one. And if I wanted, say I had a thousand of these, I could do post all dot count and it tells me I have one right there so that's good now you can also assign variables in here so if I do p equals post dot last then I now have access to uh, to this l variable so if I do l then oh I'm sorry uh, p variable uh, then it gives access to that and let me Pull this up just a little bit on the screen so it's a little bit easier to see. And so inside the P variable, I can grab any of these items just using dot syntax. So if I want to do P dot title, it'll give me my cool post. Just like if I wanted to do P dot image, it'll give me that. And if I want to change anything, I can just do P update and then uh, pass in what I want to update. So if I want to change the title to actually say my updated post, now if I go to post.last, you can see it now has my updated post. And you don't have to use a variable for that. Uh, if I do post.last.title, it gives me the same thing, uh, but when I'm in the console, I will use uh, variables quite a bit uh, just because it's a lot easier to, to use. Now, one of the things that you may uh, notice if you start playing around with this is what would happen if I did something like this? What if I just did post create and what if I didn't pass anything in? If you look, it actually created it. If I do post.last, now it, ret it returns the last element with all the items being nil, which is definitely not a good thing. We don't want people to just be able to hit the create post button and then have a, a post created with no title, no image, and no description. And so uh, in the next video, we're gonna show how to actually uh, protect against doing that by putting some validations in. Um, and so I'm going to go post.last and just go with delete. Now if I do post.all.count, now we're back to one. And I'm actually gonna delete this one as well uh, because I wanna create ours a different way. So if I do post.last, delete again, all of them are now deleted and we're back to where we started. Hit Control D if you're on a Mac and you're out of the Rails console. And so that's how you can get in the Rails console, create items, edit them, query them, and delete them.